by few people sometimes. So we welcome everybody here. And we just go through apologies, please. Uh, and golly gee, I think I might have a full out. No, Councillor Boyd. Uh, no apologies no received. received. He, may still, he may still appear. Thank you. Do we have any declarations of interest? Wherein you tell us if there's a, an interest in an item on the agenda, pecuniary or otherwise, none declared. We have the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 1st of September. Have those in front of you. We discuss the events planning, uh, planning update, United Service of Remembrance, and I'm called Jeff without an E That's on EV2022-23. But apart from that, I would propose we accept the minutes. Councillor Philcock. Okay. Seconded? Yes. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Thank you very much indeed. And therefore, we're back to the main agenda. Now, I'll sign these for you, John, so you're up to date. Yep. Right. Yeah. Matters arising. Matters arising. Um, Councillor Boyd arose and came in. Oh, yeah, I'm right. sorry, I'm just popping in because I, something's come up and I'm going to have to have my apologies. Noted. <laughs> still noted. Still noted. Noted. Okay, thank you. I don't see any actions in here particularly. John, can you? Um, no matters of nothing rising from the previous no, meeting. No, it's good. On Don, and then oh, we go straight to the budget. Word, okay. You have that one of the landscape papers, members. John, um, I think probably if you talk us through any variances, yeah, yeah. No, and we discussed the Action Festival uh, briefly at the last meeting and i'd like to say that where um there was an income shortfall prior to this particular budget um, prior to the festival which was a drop in sponsorship which we talked about mm -hmm. but i was quite confident that we'd be getting income from other sources and you can kind of see that um the ticket income ignore the first line that's our x Financial person's error putting 1016. You can see that's repeated at 1056. The item four columns yeah, down. Yeah. Um, so the initial budget was one and a half, and we've taken 2,720 pounds. Other income streams in terms of the advertising income and storeholders fee uh, mean that we're actually up overall by just under a thousand pounds in terms of income. Um, so we're pretty pleased with that. Um, and I've put that as a, an item if we want to discuss further in the, the actual Thatcher Festival reports. We'll pick it up now, it is money. Um, what was the, tell us about the ticket income, who pays ticket fees? Tell us about how the makeup of that and how it's become 1,220 pounds more, yes. which is good. So members might recall, and it's um, is that last year, um, in terms of the events committee, we uh, members agreed to allow um, the festival for certain events to be uh, ticketed. So we've looked at that very carefully this year. Uh, looked at also the the marketplace and ensured that any events we put on, uh, our tickets were incredibly competitive. Um, there were but I didn't pay a ticket price to go in. Oh, in some of them you did. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, 10 of our events were ticketed in terms of um, people having to pay an income. Uh, there were further 10 events, roughly, that were recorded on Eventbrite that, that, was, that was free events. Um, putting it on Eventbrite, though, gave us a lot of control in terms of being able to combine that with our social media strategy and we were able to um, 
work really hard on certain events where um, we knew in advance that we'd need to push the tickets. So the ticketed events, and, and the best example is the Robert Harris event where we, we charged six pounds. We generated a sum for that event of 500, five, over 500 pounds. So- um, For us or, or uh, overall to be shared? No, sorry, overall. Mm. So there were costs attached to that ticket income, yeah. but all of those costs are also recorded within the, the budgets and the costs. So for example, the ven venue hire um, is a good case in point. Um, if it's, we reach different agreements with different um, people depending on what the actual event was. Um, so the Robert Harris one, for example, we got a percentage of the ticket income and the remaining went to the to the publishers. Um, but it was a successful um, the, the good thing from our point of view is that people accepted the ticket pricing um, and we had no issues or complaints from from anybody. Let's let's see if the members got any, picked up anything. I've, any comments? Yes. I was going to ask whether you had any, any complaints at all about paying, because in the past, some people have complained because they feel that the event is all put on um, as a free event. Yes. But I certainly didn't hear anybody complain this, this year. You did. You did. Um, I have not a complaint, but I, I was surprised that the Apple Day was um, was ticketed because it was an all day event and there were things happening during it. But those event those things were not timetabled in advance, so you didn't know if you were going uh, what you what what you would find. Apple, if I can come yeah, back, please, because, yeah. like, Apple Day wasn't an event that we ran. Yeah. We allowed them yeah. to mm -hmm. to we market we helped to market it. We were pleased that it came back into the fold, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but Bebout decided that they wanted to make a charge for that. The attendance at Apple Day, and that's within the report, um, they were pretty pleased with the attendance and, and the content. The, the feedback that I got from um, Nature Discovery Center was that it was a successful event. I was also disappointed they weren't actually pressing any apples. <laughs> yeah. but, okay, I'll stick to tickets and income and expenditure. Uh, thank you for that. And it's good to see that they were valued enough. You know, people value things they pay for, um, not necessarily more than free, but you know. <laughs> what about the casual labor agency stuff? Is a okay. big variable there. Is that the uh, social media? Person. Yeah, that's that's members might recall that we um, we agreed to um, to pay for a social media expert to come in and support us, um, and the cost of that was one one thousand five hundred pound. So that's that item there, and it, yeah, and traffic management was that a surprise? Um, no, because that was let's where's that column five fifty uh yeah five fifty there look four oh two nine that should have yes that should have been recorded in the initial budget because we mm. we were planning to do the big thatch and fest off and, and that, that was the result of the big thatch and fest off and that road closure. But will you have a good look at this year's budget? Uh, uh, absolutely yeah. absolutely we need to sort of make sure with a bit more intelligence, yeah. put put those figures yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the uh, equipment hire. That's, um, you know, that's up to twelve fifty four. Look from five hundred, so variance seven fifty. It's the variances that that trouble me really. Yeah, I still need to check whether that the stage hire. For again, the big thatch and fest off, whether that's in that column, um, Councillor Brooks, mm -hmm. or, or whether that needs to be put down to on the 4073 column. Entertainment. Yeah. Well, you've which, got a bit of ins and outs. Yeah. Yeah. That could generally balance is by the looks of it, wouldn't it? 3,000 to 2,700. Yeah. Yeah. You're thereabouts if you add those two together. So, I mean, my. Can I can sorry? Yeah, please. So that you know, I I credit that 
I think we, we've done quite well in terms of the income and trying to, to match our outgoings. But the big thing that we weren't able to get, members might recall that for the social media our person, I also looked to try and get some funding support. Um, and I put an application together for the Good Exchange to support what we were trying to do on the basis that it was innovative and that by using social media, we could get to far more people. Mm -hmm. um, I pushed it to, to an, a number of potential funders. Nothing has come through at all, and I'm not expecting anything. Um, they have in the past. If they've had a, a surplus of, of income, then the actual um, Greenham Trust have popped <laughs> up at the end of the financial year. So I, I won't say no, it might, but I think it's unlikely with all the other pressures that the wrong community groups and yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, if I look at the bottom there, twenty two five two seven, we thought we'd spend. We've ended up twenty two seven eight nine. It's in the margins, isn't it? Really, unless our financial Head of Master of Ceremonies, Councillor Cole, has any any issues? I think screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Your time of year, isn't it, Ebenezer? Yes. Well, I have. Okay, thank you very much. We could turn the page in, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and this is Christmas now, yeah? Yeah. Click the lights. Again here, what's the final figures? If I were to go straight to the final figures, if you go on to the next page, seeing a considerable underspend, 33481 to 26805. You are indeed, um, but I would draw your attention to a couple of things where I, I got to say, I, we have no idea why 4034 yeah. public relations has been put in as a figure. Never stood the budget. Absolutely okay. no okay. idea at okay. all. But I will say that our previous financial manager has mm -hmm. left. And, and I would like to, to um, so we don't know why that is in, but that figure is there. And there is a secondary figure of events, Christmas lights of 3,000 uh, pounds, number 4603. And again, that's a little bit out. Uh, Councillor Cole, is this a, a positive upside to the year end position potentially? Well, that might give you a little bit of Xmas cheer. <laughs> I'll raise a symbol full of port chest. See how times are tough. Times are tough. Um, okay, yeah, these are the right side of the line. I'd, I'd also yeah. like to just quickly yeah. comment that, that we struggle with sponsorship in some yeah. of our events this year, yeah. but the Christmas light switch on, we did particularly well both in sponsorship and also in terms of other income streams, although yeah. the, the two yeah. other income streams were marginal. We actually attracted three sponsors for the Christmas lights switch on. First time in my um, knowledge, we, we also had a silver sponsor as well as a, a primary sponsor, um, which were Elysium Healthcare, um, Newbury Building Society as a silver sponsor, and Oakley Green continued with their Christmas tree yeah. sponsor. Um, I would say I did put an ambitious target in for sponsorship, but we were £100 off that. But the advertising income and storeholders fees made up for, for any shortfall. At the all. advertising income was what, in the programme? or Yes, yeah. in the programme. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Have you got some more items to drop in, or is this pretty much um, clearly No, it? we've gone through this pretty carefully, myself and the town clerk, in terms of our expected costs. and. Right. We deliberately, um, bearing in mind Family Fund Day, there was a slight overspend. We deliberately tried to um, ensure that the the costs that, that were um, that we were spending that we were very careful about them this year. 
Any questions, members, on, on the Christmas lights? And I'll just touch on Remembrance Day after that. Uh, no? Okay. I'm, 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 yes. I need to say, Mr. Matt, <clears throat> um, I, I just uh, offer my congratulations to the team in uh, uh, securing additional uh, sponsorship funding. I think this is a particularly difficult time generally, and sponsorship funding is never easy to, to, to obtain. So it's great to see new sponsors coming in, new local organisations getting involved in, in civic events, but congratulations too on securing those funds. Thank you. Okay. And then if you can just touch on the Remembrance Day Parade, which looks pretty well, very tidy indeed. Anything to flag up? No, again, I mean, you can see that we um, looked at the cost centres and the cost lines and um, pretty much, I mean, traffic management fees, as you'd expect, have gone yeah. up slightly because of yeah. petrol, diesel, et cetera. But again, we were, we were pretty competitive for from Thatcham Festival onwards with our traffic management um, and went out to um, more than one company to get additional costs. Um, not additional quotes, which which gave us, I think, quite a strong position and then going back to them and saying, this is our budget. So I'm um, quite pleased with that. Good. Uh, I think we're asked to note this, aren't we? Yes. Members, happy to note these accounts for the various movements. So done. And then you're going to feedback on the festival itself, which is the report here. Uh, but before you do, I think it was personally seemed to me to be very successful, well attended, um, and we can always improve it, and we'll talk about that tonight. But I'd like to uh, propose a vote of thanks to the to John, to Georgie, and the staff here for pulling off a very program very well respected, got off to a great start on the Friday night with the ghost walk, the cast or a crowd of thousands. <laughs> two of the uh, two of the actors in the in the, in the chamber tonight. Um, but well done to you. And uh, will you please minute? Are, are, are we happy to revote it? Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Please minute that. Thank you. So over to you again. Okay. Um, I, I just then just summarise just for me that. The top line in terms of what I thought was especially successful <clears throat> about this year. Um, it's not always about quantity events. In fact, that might be something members might wish to discuss, but there were 43 separate events compared with 35 the previous year. Um, but the thing I think that was good about the event this year um, was its diversity. <clears throat> um, and also the fact that it's popularity as well um, in terms of the attendance numbers that we that we had um, and the diversity was both a combo I think a combination of, of several things existing organizations and um, doing something a little bit different and trying to hit a, hit potentially a different demographic and the two examples I want to cite are cats and the ghost walk and hackspace who did a, a retro computer day that was absolutely packed but not just packed packed with a demographic of of people that we've sometimes struggled to reach in the festival uh, of ages um around about from 16 to about 40 which is quite an important demographic with one caveat that most of the people coming in were male <laughs> right uh, it, it's still that useful thing to comment. One of the other diverse things that, that we did, I think, was because we've looked to over the last few years have a bit more of a curatorial uh, element to the festival. And, and what I mean by that is that we've tried to court organisations that we try to, we'd like to attract. So, for example, um, there's two strands of that. The one that relates to the council's policy, environmental policy. So we've looked at uh, walks um, in, in some of the incredible surrounding countryside of Thatcham, whether that's Greenham or Bowdown Woods, or even just our own urban landscape. Um, and we also looked at a, at a talk working with Bee Bows, um, 
uh, a rewilding talk and looking at rewilding and how how important that is and encouraging um, the sustainability market that, that has a following um, but don't normally put on their market during the festival and certainly have never used Frank Hutchins Hall before. And their verdict, even though they, they didn't get as many people as they normally do, was that they got new customers because by the, the fact that it was at, at a new hall. So um, we've also kind of looked at the fact that, that you know, the council is trying to, to support um, refugees. Um, one of the things we, we work very closely with is, is Howard Grace, who put on an exceptional talk online called Refugees uh, as Rebuilders. And, and it reached an international audience, which, is, which I think is great for, for Thatcham. Uh, and we also managed to invite the person that's involved in the um, supporting them at the hotel. Uh, so she was one of the, the speakers. So I think, I think we're able to, to deliver that, those kind of elements if we plan the festival early enough. The Faction Fest Off is, is a great case in point, which we continued with, which helps um, one of the things when we were talking to way back in the beginning of last year, the, the businesses in the town centre was that they felt that the high street was an area that, that we weren't, um, it didn't get the footfall that the Broadway gets for perhaps sometimes uh, locational reasons where the car parks are located, et cetera. So the fest off was an event that we put we put on deliberately to try and give focus to the high street. Um, and this year it was successful in terms of the turnout, the variety, the demographic. Um, so I think that's just wanted to draw attention to that as well. Um, yes, I, I was going to ask you, bear in mind, we, we have yes, yes, in the high street. Shall we suspend uh, standing orders. Uh, we, we invite uh, members of the public to speak now under our new, under our new um, Okay, we're inviting members. Will, will we invite members of the public to speak? <laughs> All in favour? <laughs> we are inviting you to speak. You don't have to. <laughs> Since you know, um, you're, you're in the high street, anything to contribute? <laughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't attend. We couldn't be there this year. Um, we we were last year. Right. And it was fantastic. Um, made a real big difference uh, to the public becoming aware of what businesses are on the high street. And that there is a high street. Yes, know? yes, absolutely. So I think a lot of people see the Broadway and come round through the high street, but don't see it yeah. perhaps yeah. there. Yeah. So that really brought it to people's attention. And it, it, it was a real mm -hmm. bonus for us. That, uh, that the high street is now getting some attention. Did you have you talked with your neighbours at all to get a similar view? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The tattoo shop next door to us. I think yeah. he said he took about fifteen hundred pounds worth of business. Well, they were all there. Uh, yeah. They they had a beer, popped in there, and quick <laughs> <laughs> tattoo. Oh yeah, the henna tattoos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Still, it's it's raising awareness. Yeah. What shops are up down there? there? Yeah. So I think you get a, an endorsement there. Um, I don't have to stop inviting the public now, do I? Um, <laughs> my constitutional expert here will put me right if I'm if I'm doing something wrong. Okay, John. Well done. Uh, the only final thing to say about it was that I think being able to secure someone like Robert Harris gives the, the festival a bit of profile and allows us to, in future years, perhaps secure people of that calibre. I mean, I'm not saying that, that that's what, you know, we know it's about the community and encouraging community organisations, but getting someone who's regional, you know, who lives yeah, in Kingsbury yeah. and securing him uh, and the attendances that we got and the feedback, I think is, again, I think it helps us to, to develop the festival. Um, so Max Hastings next year, no? he's local. Note made. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's open up to, to the floor, members. Okay. Council Park. There's one minor point. Uh, it'd be great for it next year. You could schedule the walks on days when it's not going to rain. <laughs> uh, 
it, it, it wasn't just the yes, it wasn't just the Bowdow walk. It was the Green and Common walk. Yeah, right. Two days later, again, the the heavens opened. Mm. I felt sorry for for Councillor Pike that was that was supporting those two <laughs> events, but thank you, Councillor. Uh, I have to stand up for, for our weather wizard, uh, given his track record in weather for ninety five percent of our events. Uh, I, I think he's allowed the old laps. <laughs> You're expecting perfection, Councillor Pike. I'm sorry, it can't be done. Um, other points, um, uh, members. For, for me, we did talk about it briefly afterwards on a, on a briefing in here, and. Uh, I said, well, could we look at teenage provision for teenagers, a, a band evening, they call them bands now, but we talk maybe at the football club, we could have a, I'm going to use the wrong terminology, but some sort of dance, disco, band event for younger people. I know, I'm well out of touch. I still call it, I still call it the hit parade, you know, it's the charts, you know. But, I don't know. Um, but... We got, you know, you can get young children in for thrives, the dancing, older folk for all the cultural stuff. But what about that in between is um, I was accosted at one point by a bunch of lads on bikes. And I said, so are you enjoying it? And I, I didn't. I got pretty dusty answer. This was the, uh, the the leisure thing on the green, on the Broadway green. I said, well, what would you like then? And they didn't know, but I felt it just came home to me. Was there anything I could have pointed them towards? So we talked about that, didn't we? And we've already got our brain matter thinking about it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Any other changes you'd like to have made? Or things you'd have done differently? Uh, no, I, th I think it was helpful being able to... Um, to be able to plan it earlier than before, and we weren't encumbered perhaps by the late August event, for example, that gave us as a team a little more time mm, to yeah, organize it. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. we were also a week later in the calendar, but I actually suggested in this report as well that that I don't we don't think if we had any negative feedback, we felt that Leisure and Craft Fair and the Cold Ash Brass, um, the finale concert we didn't get the audiences that we thought we would. And there was some feedback from, from people thinking that perhaps it, the reason why we pushed it for the second week was we thought we might get a different audience because it was the start then of the October half-term holidays, the first weekend. But there's, there's a feeling that backfired on us and that quite a few families decide perhaps to leave uh, on that time. But or perhaps there's just a very competitive market place for, for half term, you know, with, with other commercial organizations doing half term things. So um, a suggestion we'd like to, to also ask members is whether whether it, we'd like to start and go back to the, the starting position, um, which which um, I've, I've, well, I've asked earlier, you to, about... yeah, a week earlier, okay. October 7th okay. to the 15th. Okay. And do we remember why? I've got you, Councillor Crumb. Do we remember why we pushed it back a week? Good. Is there any particular reason? It, it was. We felt that there might be a, the marketplace to try and attract people from a, the half term, thinking uh, about going on the half term break, uh, as well as potentially giving us a little bit more lead time to organise. They, they were the two things. But if I added that up, and I can't do it in my head, yeah. And there are duplications. People came to more than one event. But you see all the football here. Some of it estimates, I grant you. But if I did that up, there's still a very healthy number of attendees across the um, test. So, 4,689. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, but, you, you, you know, he and I did 50. So, you know, <laughs> we double counted. Um, Councillor Crumley. Um, thank you. I was just wondering if we could have children and a, ch a children's author would probably draw in a good, a good crowd of families. I think he's going to tell you we did have one. We, we, had, we, had, we, we, had, we, we had two yes. and we were very surprised because Holly Webb yes. that we put on in 2019, we didn't, we didn't have to 
a motor at all. And it was the library because, and then we weren't able to, to use the library because members might recall we were, there was the potential of offering this space as a library yeah. if yeah. the library is going to be refurbished. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I don't think that was the issue. The issue was, I think the audience, the core audience is, is people from schools. And 2019, we made quite a good headway within the schools in terms of targeting them for events. Um, and I had, I felt I had the ear to, to most of the school's head teachers. So much harder this year to, to, unsurprisingly, I think, in the last two years to get their, their attention and support, really. Um, um, but we, we did manage to get a good audience with Holly Webb in the end, mm. but it was hard. And, and we, Eventbrite helped enormously because we were then able to go and, and talk to uh, some of the people we met at Apple Day at the last minute and say, do you want to fancy going to Holly Webb and, and things like that. So, so, but I think it's a tricky one. I mean, I know reading is very important in terms of schools and it's interesting that Kenneth School's head has, uh, has, has created a feature on that. So I'd I definitely would like to, to put more author talks and work on that area. They can be hit and miss. I'll take it in a sec. The previous year, I went to one in the library, and I think there was only four people there. Uh, do you remember that one? Yes, yeah. you know, that was a poetry one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll keep we'll keep going with it, Councillor Yep. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ms. Matt. So, so I mean, through you, do you feel, uh, John, that with the uh, the expertise that, that you brought in with your um, uh, with your uh, social media specialist this year, and the uh, the statistical information you can gather through Eventbrite and that kind of thing, do you do you feel that you're you're gathering more information about how to target different demographics uh, in different ways uh, for, for for future events? Is it that is it is it that granular or is is it probably a little bit more hit and miss than that? But does that kind of information give you different communication channels out to different groups? Do you think having that support, we learned a lot from him in terms of the brevity of social media messages that <laughs> our audiences are looking at things like Facebook. Um, and no doubt it will change again. But one of the massive pluses for us as an organization was, was Eventbrite and being able to have that ticketed information instantly and being able to do something about it and seeing, having, having 20, over 20 events, we, we could see at a moment's notice how sales or even if it wasn't ticket income, how the bookings were going and we could then adjust our, our strategy. And with that kind of time, it's 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 social media basically. Mm. So it was a big help, yeah. And again, uh, you know, I think um, I'll end this particular section unless we've got any other comments with how well it went and how much we enjoyed it. Absolutely, uh, we we look to build on it. But what well on? Remember, say twenty two, the weather wizard would add add his, his or her best again. Mm -hmm. um, Crisp and dry, and uh, I think well attended. Back to back to Remembrance Day praise we remember. Anything to add? No, no. I think I think it seemed to be the, the event worked like clockwork. It seemed to work very well. Um, the report is brief because of that. You know, we've we sent out to to all the planning. The people in the planning committee and there's quite a few organizations and they've all reported back pos positively it was um, yeah any comments otherwise we're through number seven as well remember stay well done thank you went well and then we come to the events update the, um, the first one being we're looking back on friday and then we're looking a little bit of forward thinking yeah yeah so first the lights switch on Um, so that was, I can't believe that was two days, three days ago, <laughs> and here we are. Um, 
I did write some notes down. Sorry, that's why I'm frantically. Yes. Um, I mean, we're still waiting for the, for the dust to settle in terms of um, getting a really in-depth feedback. But the early suggestions, and for me, in, in my time since I've been here, it's probably the, the best Christmas lights switch on mm -hmm. that we've had, both in terms of content, but also, quite importantly, lo logistics and audience numbers and value for money. So I think that's quite important because we did cut one or two things, which we hope no one has no, no one has noticed. <laughs> Spot the cut. Spot the cut. Um, but so we were very careful about that without because obviously we don't want to cut quality. We don't want mm. to, to cut health and safety. Um, the traders, I'll just quickly comment on the traders. We had first get ready. Was, you might, might be asking again in a moment. Yeah. That that was our biggest take up in terms of traders. Um, we put more stalls in than than previously, and we had more refreshments and food stalls, particularly at the Cook and Butcher. And you might have noticed um, great feedback from all the traders, and all of them are saying to us that they were pretty much sold out by the end of the evening. So we can't ask for. You know, we, we we seem to have got that chemistry right in terms of numbers and um, and the amount of traders that we put on sites. Um, the attractions off the stage were also appreciated by the public. The Stilt Walker, the Nativity Farm, the Steam Engine, which we have every year, the treasure hunt that that, that took people around to the businesses, um, the window displays. Um, which seemed to go very well, and and also kind of logistics wise, I was pretty pleased with the traffic management because we have had problems in the past, ranging from um, public and vehicles to taxi drivers to <laughs> to the bus services, but received no no complaints at all, and and big thanks to our stewards and and the Rotary for supplying stewards and for that, and no issues in terms of setting up traders. We we changed things around a little bit and created a bit more space within the stalls to avoid avoid bottlenecks, and it seemed to work. Um, and again, if I may invite one of the traders, did you stay open? We did, yes. How'd it go? Um, it went very well. We had uh, something that drew the, drew the public to us. Otherwise, I don't think we would have seen a person or why not. Because we really. Not because they don't tend to... Um, I don't think there were any other shops open on the high street. Right, other than right. Sure, sure. Because it's, we're not part of that. I get you. Gentleman there? Yeah, yeah I'd like to say a uh, member of the public that it was busier, um, but felt safe, really well organised, um, having a young daughter. Um, I felt I could keep an eye on at all times. Um, the pricing was competitive. Uh, one of the donut stores was really good, mm -hmm. and um, and that was really really well received. And um, I think, yeah, there's some really positive things there compared to obviously when I've been in previous years. And um, bringing it back with bang, that was fantastic. Excellent, thank you. Any comments? I mean, I haven't been to all of them over the years, and Councillor Cole is the doyen of the announcement system down there. But uh, when I stood up on the stage to do the light plunger. It was packed, absolutely packed, and getting from one end of the board to the other was a, a no, ten minute. Do it by yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. We did break the plunger. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry <but laughs> my little helpers were so determined that when I said press, they went for it. Four little girls. By golly gee, I had me my hand crushed, thing broken. They also, I know this is being recorded. I don't want to spoil the illusion. But of course, it is a box with a plunger, but not not connected to anything. And one of my little twins who was helping me said, "said Oh, oh, look, there's no wire." Yeah. And I quickly said, "Oh, it's all done by remote control." <laughs> and she was happy with that. So I'm sorry we've broken it. Yes, yes, uh, Jane. And. Um I was around the corner in the shop at the time. Um, it was about ten past seven, and uh, I looked out to see if the lights had come on to see if it had been done. Um, and I knew that the lights had been switched on because 
everybody was then flocking away home. Uh, Just to mention for your future events, maybe it might be something to consider if there's any way of, of keeping them there or, or if you're thinking maybe, okay, if that's what they're going to do, then maybe we'll end it there. It is interesting because my wife said, oh, you're switching then. I'm a bit late. Look, they're all, all everybody's here at six. But if after you've switched them on, they're all going to go home, that defeats the object. Councillor Cole. In the past, going back 10 years-ish, uh, we always used to have entertainment after the lights were switched mm -hmm. on as well. Which we did, of course. Then, yeah, yeah. And everyone went home. And everyone went home. All oh, right. So right. used to go to the band. Mm. It's totally fantastic. Yeah. Um, but it, it gets to the stage where lights go on, especially if um, there's parents with younger kids. Yeah, yeah. They, they obviously go home, they go home to bed. Um, so it's, 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 it was ever thus, whatever we... Never thus. The lights, I thought, looked very good when they came on. That, uh, you know, I don't know if we've got more this year or they're all, you know, are there any extras this year? But they look really good. We... We did, two, good? We, we did two things. We there was some feedback last year that the Christmas tree had multicolored lights, but the white lights didn't clash a little bit. The warm white in the Christmas tree clashed with the icicles. So we put the white lights in the Christmas tree that match the icicles and just red. And actually, as a result, we think it stands out more. In the kind of less is more, but have a have a you know it's it's kind of quite subtle I think. But also we did some of those icicles were on the last legs, so we did buy some mm. new icicles. Mm. Um, no, I think it year. showed. Yeah. Uh, can I come back very mm. quickly? Sorry to one comment that uh, Councillor Cole made about the whole uh, and and members of our of the public as well in terms of people leaving. It was an exceptionally cold <laughs> night, but also, and perhaps this was something we shouldn't have done, one of the biggest and youngest groups was at Whitelands Park Primary School. Mm -hmm. And they persuaded me to allow their whole, pretty much, it seemed like the whole school to turn up at 5 mm -hmm. 20. Yeah. Now, I thought that, that, you know, thinking in hindsight, I think the issue is they're not going to stay, even though they perform later, that they, they, they would stay probably to the, the switch on and then they'd be on their last legs at, at seven o'clock. Um, you know, despite the fact that we've got this superstar of all boy band that perhaps they wanted to see, the mums and dads are probably going to say, you're, you're going home now. <laughs> So that's that's perhaps my my fault and and, and allowing Whitelands Park to to come on even before anything's happened. You know. Well, Mr. Santos is getting a reputation, you know, with his uh, his choirs. Yeah. So, yeah. Like Sonia, um, you know, one of these uh, people who makes things happen in our True. entertaining world. Yeah. Um, uh, you call it a snow cannon. I thought the snow was very good. I, I hardly think it was being blown out. Canon like but it was just a nice little flake, wasn't it, Erin? Mm. Um, did we learn any more about the drone? Yes. Oh. Ah, tell us more about the drone. Uh, um, <laughs> might be an idea to talk more outside this meeting, Ooh. but but because it was Ukrainian. No, 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 no. no we um, we it, it's a member of the public, okay. and we okay. feel we've. Make contact okay. with okay. him. Okay. Uh, whether we're, we're able to get the footage or not oh, from right. him, we've had a look at the footage, and it looks really interesting seeing yeah. the crowd of two thousand yeah. people yeah. from 30, 40 foot high up. Okay. Well, That's there is a conversation <laughs> to be had. Yeah. I know you're being cautious and reticent about you about how I'm drawn into that. We're drawn into that, but I think there's something maybe to follow up on there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I was surprised somebody could just pop along with their drone and send it up there. But it was these two green eyes looking at us. I thought War of the Worlds had arrived. <laughs> um, again, though, a, a good evening, very enjoyable, and a vote of thanks to all the staff. Oh, yes. Give up a lot of time and their evenings. They're, they're on duty, you know, they're not, say, enjoying it. I hope they're enjoying it in their way, but they're working, and they need to be 
thank for that, I feel. Did you want to come back, sir? Uh, uh, no, I, I think we covered all the points. I was okay. just thinking about the uh, uh, the way that people disappear immediately after, after the lights. And I thought the uh, the lights part was uh, was very good, and I, I like the slow effect and so on. Um, I, I think we we do have that quite regularly. That people tend to there tends to be a mass exodus shortly after the uh, after the lights. Even if you've got some music play, playing. Uh, Shortly afterwards, and have we have we ever considered changing the time of the actual um, uh, lights? You know, making that a little bit earlier. I'm not sure whether we've. It, it's established at seven o'clock, right? Yeah. Could we go seven thirty? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. That, if we uh, went, if we went at six or six thirty, do we get that exodus again, which is mitigating against what we're trying to achieve? Did you want to come back? I, I certainly wouldn't suggest going later. Later, yeah, okay. You, wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't get any kids there. Yeah, no, 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 not like the young ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be way past that. Yeah. But uh, do we not risk if we go earlier? Because it's dark, and you could put the lights on from five thirty, but you lose the people going home then. Um, because now it's 6.30, might as well go home, it's all done here, sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's it is a difficult think one. about it yeah. in terms of next year. Okay, move on to the King's Coronation. Now, I'm going to introduce this with a little bit of caution. Um, we haven't been told what uh, councils and organisations are going to do up and down the country. Um, we don't know if there'll be a beacon lit um, and if we want to key into that, either by asking our staff to add another big event on, these things don't come around very often. We seem to have had a cluster together, or even as the as the clerk suggested, perhaps on an email earlier today, is there an organisation we can partner with to deliver it? I think it's a bit premature to go into that tonight. I'd like to call a special meeting uh, unless there's an events committee coming up. Well, as soon as we have more guidance, now there is a man who gives us this guidance. Uh, uh, yeah, I forget his name. And me. Okay. And when we get that, we'll circulate it, call a meeting and say, okay, this is what the rest of the country look like they're going to do. Um, what do we want to do? Can we do it? How can we do it? People will hopefully put on their own street parties, I want to gate crash another 10 street street parties as I did in the Jubilee. Um, but I don't think we can do much tonight about it unless anybody wants to go into any sort of crystal ball gazing, really, you know. I, I agree with you. Yes. Okay, yes. let's hold it over. John, that I don't think you need a steer tonight because not much to steer you on, is there? No, I'm, I'm happy to. No, but as I suggested. say, we might call a special one just to focus on that. Yep. But you've probably got a little bit more grasp around the freedom of the town because we've done it before. We know what it's going to be and we've got an idea what needs to be organised. Do you want to bring us up to date on that? Yeah. So just to sort of remind remind members, I mean, the, the last time that there was a freedom of the town, it was in 2016. It was going to be last year. But again, because of the whole issue was with lockdown and the uncertainty at that time when we were planning it, it was postponed. Um, th there's a view from, from, from officers that we should retain this event um, because of the history we have with the military in Thatcham and the honour bestowed to the Royal Engineers. Um, so it's it's been a while since we met with them. The date that they suggested when we had an early planning meeting was that the date of the actual freedom of the town should be 14th of July next year. There is a sum of money that's, that's been um, put on the table. I, I, I probably have got the financial wherewithal wrong about this, but my understanding from the town clerk is that she's put forward for to the either full council or the financial council a sum of money for, for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and and there is a budget being worked up with a sum of money in it so 
you're right there. But do you have a mind's eye in your mind's eye what the day, the afternoon will contain? There's a lot of involvement of the forces in this as well, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. I wasn't, I was the events manager in 2019. I know, I know. So all I've done is looked back on files. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Crumley. Yeah. Yes, it was me in 2016. Right. And um, it was fantastic. And I, we did find that the army were wonderful. They did lots of organising, lots of planning. They did rehearsals. Um, and so I think it you know, all worked really well because everybody was ready for it and everybody practised. But it's, it was a really, really great day. We had uh, Other people in the room remember it because I was probably working during the afternoon and therefore wasn't there. The weather was good. So we we'll rely on the weather wizard, but there are bands playing, aren't there? There's backs waving, we paraded, we inspected right. the troops with some high officer's name, I can't remember. And then we all marched back to here mm -hmm. and had afternoon tea meetings for all of the dignitaries. Right. We had pints of beer for all of the members of the army. They got they were all supposed to, I think, have one pint, but I think by the look of the bar bill, they had a few more than that. Um but yes, it uh, it worked really well. I think you were there. You know, okay, okay. So you're in the early stages, but there is a format for this, and uh, the army will be telling you what it is by the sound of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our role in it is what? Um, marshalling, uh, closing the roads, yes. putting on the tea and the beer. Um, but the army are the ones who will do the parade, aren't they? When we had a band, we had a tree band. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Carl. I'm just to ask, um, John may not know the point you're doing on the spot if you, if you don't, but the um, the money that's been suggested for the the event, from memory, is seven and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I've got. Is that is that is that a figure that we think may be about right, or has it been kind of worked up from the bottom up, as it were? I'm, I'm just thinking for the the, the budget because it's uh, yeah, it's good a lot of money for next year, which isn't in this year's budget. And this year's budget is already extremely stretched. In fact, we are having overspend um, purely and simply because inflation has been so high. Um, but I, I was just curious as to whether it whether it was uh, a, a bottom up one or just a, a a figure that we thought would be would looks about right. An estimate, and and that's a good point because do we know what the components spend are on it? Is there's closing roads has a cost? We know about that, but you know, do we know other aspects? We got to lay on the reception, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I think it's it's the latter of what you said. It's 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 I don't. The detail certainly hasn't been worked up in terms of what it we've got a we've got an idea of what it looks like based on 2016. We haven't costed that out in terms of gone to traffic management companies and, and say, give us a quote, um, or the catering or the hospitality, for example. So that needs to be worked up. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't help you much because it isn't five pounds, it's seven and a half pounds. But, but give us a break. So you're comfortable with that? This you've got your date. You're in charge. In touch with the forces. No doubt they'll be meeting with you uh, on a number of occasions to synchronise everything. Anything you need the committee this no, evening? No, I, I think we we want. To, I just wanted to 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 double check that 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 members hundred percent want this to go ahead. And and see this as an important occasion for for the town. We wanted to to okay, check that. Okay. We're not deciding that tonight, but we'll take the temperature. Uh, for what it's worth, I recall a strong desire to do it from the all, all of the councillors. Uh, does anybody demur from that at all? Keen would like to see it go ahead. I think there's your there's your okay. there's your poll. No, no consideration of it not going out. If we don't do it, I understand that we start to lose it in the calendar, and we wouldn't want to do so. And I'm sorry, um, the Hermitage backs they reciprocate by inviting us back to things. You know, beating the bands or the bands playing in the summer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, they invited me or us right. to their, various events. Did you? Okay. Yes. All right. So, parties, oh, you know. the word. Windsor Castle, I can imagine the palace of yeah. Councillor. Yeah. yeah. 
the great and the good. Everybody. Okay, excellent. I think we're probably done. Is that helps you, John? Yeah, that's indeed. Thank you very much. Anything indeed. else, members? Otherwise, I'm going to 59 minutes. Declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much.